as we pointed out, uh, there's some simplifications that can take place. We can reduce the amount of integration that we've got to do if we can demonstrate that there is symmetry, certain types of symmetry displayed in the functions f of t that we're attempting to calculate the Fourier series for. In this video, we're going to look at the simplifications that come about, come about for each of the different types of symmetries. So to begin with, if we can prove that the function is even fun an even function, which means it's symmetrical about the y-axis, the vertical axis, or that f of x is equal to negative f of x, then we need only integrate over half of the period and multiply the result of that by 2. So we're going to go, basically what we're saying is that you get the same contributions from 0 to t over 2 as you get from t over 2 to t. So you only have to integrate from 0 to t over 2 and then multiply the results by 2. Under normal circumstances or in, without symmetry, a sub v is 1 over t times the integral from 0 to t. With even symmetry, um, we integrate only over half the period and multiply the result by 2. A sub k's can be calculated again by integrating over just half of the period and multiplying the results by 2. So normally it's 2, 2 over t times the integral over the whole period. Here we just integrate over half the period and then multiply the results by 2. An interesting characteristic that's a result of even symmetry is that the b sub k's will be 0 for all values of k. Now, b sub k's, those are the coefficients on the sine terms of the Fourier expansion. Now, because this function is even, the b sub k's, which are odd symmetrical, will have, there will be no, uh, no sine terms in the Fourier expansion of an even function. Now, if there's odd symmetry, a similar set of circumstances arise. Once again, the definition of, of odd symmetry is that it's symmetrical about the origin. One of the characteristics of odd symmetry is that there will be no DC component. There's just as much above the horizontal axis as there is below the horizontal axis. So A sub B will be zero for any function that has odd symmetry. Now, when we were talking about even symmetry, the B sub k's turned out to be 0. When there's odd symmetry, the A sub k's will be 0. In other words, there will be no cosine terms in the Fourier expansion of an odd symmetric waveform. And we're going to look at, uh, in a couple of videos ahead, we're going to uh, look at graphically why, or at least try and get a feel for what's happening that causes these these characteristics. So finally, the B sub k's can be obtained for an odd symmetrical um, function by integrating over half of the period and then multiplying the results by 2. So ordinarily, B sub k is 2 over t times the integral over the entire period. When there's odd symmetry, we only integrate over half the period and then multiply the results by 2. Now, half wave symmetry. It either may or may not be even or odd. So what we're saying is that half-wave symmetry may have an even construction to it. It may have an odd construction to it. But it doesn't have to be. It may not be either even or odd and still have half-wave symmetry. So the half-wave symmetry gives us the following characteristics. First of all, Again, because a half-wave symmetry has as much above the horizontal axis as it has below the horizontal axis, the DC term, or the average value, of a half-wave symmetrical waveform will be 0. A sub V will equal 0. The A sub Ks will equal 0 for K being even values. And similarly, the B sub Ks will be 0 for K being even values. So for K equals 2, 4, and 6, the A sub Ks and B sub Ks will all be 0. For the values of k being odd, the a sub k's and the b sub k's can be calculated by integrating over half of the waveform, half the period, and then multiplying the results by 2. Quarter wave symmetry. In order for a, a function to be quarter wave symmetry, it must also be either 
It must also be half wave symmetrical, and it's going to be either even or odd. So quarter wave symmetry has to show half wave symmetry, and in addition to that, it will either be even function or an odd function. For an even function with half wave or with quarter wave symmetry, because it's also half wave, we're still going to have a zero average value. There'll be no DC component. There can't be a DC component if there's half wave symmetry. Once again, the a sub k's are going to be zero for even values of k. That's a characteristic that follows through or flows through from the half wave symmetry. The a sub k's for k being odd can be calculated by going now over just a quarter of the waveform. So keep in mind, even symmetry, or half wave, quarter wave symmetry has half wave symmetry, and then halfway through the lobes, uh, you'll find symmetry about that line at halfway through the lobes. So if we've got, uh, let's see if we can just draw something here, kind of give us a feel for this. So we can draw it, um, uh, we'll draw it with odd symmetry. It's half wave symmetrical, and then the positive lobe and the negative lobe are also symmetrical about their halfway point. So what we're saying is that if there's this type of symmetry, we only have to integrate from 0 to t over 4, because the integration from here to 0 to t over 4, and from, zero, um, from t over 4 to t over 2, is going to give us the same results. We, we get the same results integrating over this period, as this period, as this interval of the period, and this interval of the period. So we only need to integrate over one quarter, quarter of the period and then multiply our results by 4. So the a sub k is instead of typically being 2 over t times the integral from 0 to t, we're going to integrate only over one fourth of that integral interval and then multiply the result by 4. Now, if the quarter wave symmetry also has even, then the b sub k's will be zero also, as was the case for even symmetry. Now, if the quarter wave symmetry has odd symmetry, it will again have a zero dc value. That's because of its half wave symmetry. The a sub k's will all be zero because the function is odd. Up here we saw that the function was, if the function was odd, there would be no cosine terms in the Fourier expansion. Now, the b sub k's will be zero for values of k even. This is a result of the half wave symmetry, and we saw that up here. For values of k being 1, 3, 5, the odd values of k, then the b sub k's can be calculated by integrating over a quarter of the wavelength and once again multiplying by the result by 4.